Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Dyer Zonchowskis. Today is the 16th of April 2020, so yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Thursday's morning session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, uh, the, us the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As is always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so also just before we jump in, as usual, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page which we update as well on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to uh, visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there, guys. So um, also uh, let's quickly update this number see what's happening so yep yesterday we've climbed above the uh, 2 million barrier um, so now uh, let's have a look what's happening here so we've the number has risen slightly yes um, yep and the death toll continues to rise as well so well I mean not very good um, let's put it this way so yeah guys I hope you're staying safe I hope you're all uh, protected so yep uh, let's see how the markets are reacting to all this now Yesterday we had a bit of a slide here and uh, I talked about the FTSE uh, yesterday in my morning video as well. So uh, basically uh, the uh, the index drifted lower and what I was talking about in my trader's tea time as well was that if we see a close, because we already were uh, sliding lower, what I, was, what I was saying, if we see a close below this territory, then yep, in a way it increases the chances of a uh, potential move further down. And to be honest, it, it closed lower here and it continued to drift a little bit further down and uh, but now looking at the cash index we can see that the price is uh, currently balancing around the 5591 territory somewhere around there guys so somewhere around here here where it closed uh, yesterday so still we're still below this upside line um, if you remember I've also mentioned that in order for us to, con con to get a little bit more comfortable with lower levels we need to see a drop below the mm, below this level here the 5,500 mark, uh, which is the lowest point of 2016, guys. So something to consider, something to keep an eye on. Um, don't get me wrong, we may see a sharp reversal. Now, th again, th these are the, because this upside line was still a very tentative one, we may get, um, uh, we may get a nice reversal here and a push higher, but again, the f first for now, of course, given the current move, we are going to be leaning more towards the upside. Um, for in term, uh, sorry, the upside, the downside. For the upside, we would need to see a push back above this 5,815 territory in order to kind of get comfortable with the with higher levels. For now, this is leaning more towards the downside, and as I said, uh, we could be uh, aiming for slightly lower levels, especially if the uh, the index uh, drifts below the 5,500 level. Of course, don't get me wrong, this little little territory around here could be an, an obstacle as well to watch because the 5,350, 150 zone, roughly around there, uh, could uh, hold the price from moving lower initially because and uh, uh, because this could be seen as a, as the lower side of a possible range here. So again, that's a little, me a little bit getting ahead of myself, uh, but something to consider, something to keep in mind. So, yep, guys, for now, keep your eyes on the 5,500 level. If this gets broken, then yep, uh, further declines could be possible. Uh, but if this by any chance reverses sharply back to the upside and climbs back above the 5,815-16 territory, then, well, I mean, this could bring the upside back on the table. Uh, the German DAX. Now, the German DAX here is uh, 
tricky, I would say, because yes, on one hand, it is drifting lower. Um, it is, uh, the, the price is currently balancing around the 10,295 zone, roughly around, uh, well, basically not far from where it closed, closed yesterday, so maybe just slightly above it. So it still remains above the subside line. So on one hand, we have the FTSE, which is kind of uh, is feeling a little bit on the weaker side, and then we have the da German DAX, which is, mo although moving lower, still this could this move lower could still be could still could see could be seen as a uh, as a temporary correction uh, before another leg of buying. So that's why probably at this point in time we will remain neutral and just continue observing this one. And in a way, for us to get maybe excited with uh, higher levels, uh, well, we would prefer maybe to push above uh, this barrier here, basically the current highest point of this week, which is near the 10,820 zone. So if we do get a nice push above this, then, uh, well, this might, uh, well, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, more buyers could join in. So that's why if you wanna be on the safe side, probably wait for a push above this this level right here because all this zone here could be tricky because in a way we could rebound, but at the same time, if it decides to break this upside line, we could drift lower however for the downside we as i mentioned previously we need to see a nice good uh, drop below the 10th the psychological 10,000 zone and then we could aim for lower levels um wti oil so quick update on this so yesterday the um yesterday the the commodity managed to uh drift below the uh, psychological 20 mark um, however again it failed to close below this so um, it was balancing nicely below this and below that psychological 20 zone but still failed to close below it so basically today this morning we are seeing another attempt uh, to kind of break uh, this uh, this level and the attempt is successful so far now the big question here is again can it remain below this uh, psychological 20 zone to be honest uh, the more it's kind of testing this area, the more uh, we are leaning to the fact that eventually this could be could be broken, and the path towards towards slightly lower levels could be open. So again, for now, be very careful. Uh, probably wait uh, this one out, and uh, in order, for, let's say, to consider the upside here, probably we would uh, like to see a push above the back above the 26.08 zone. That's the uh, lowest point of 2016 here. And uh, only then we could consider some higher levels, but only up until this downside line, because this move higher could be seen as a temporary uh, temporary correction uh, before another leg of selling. But because, like I said, overall, we're still below this downside line. So, yep, guys, for now, uh, from the very short term perspective, all eyes are in that psychological 20 zone. We need to see a nice daily close below this before we could con uh, get comfortable a little bit more with lower levels. Uh, Ethereum. So, uh, this one finally. Finally, finally managed to close a daily candle below its upside support line here, taken from the low of the 13th of March. Now I talked about this uh, this crypto this week, and this is exactly what I was talking about. That we're uh, what I was saying that we need to see a clear break and a close uh, of and a clear break of one of these ups uh, one of these lines and uh, an upside support line or the downside uh, resistance line uh, before we could consider further directional moves. So in a way. You can see that um, the uh, the crypto managed to break the upside support line, and uh, in a way, this kind of increases the chances of a potential further slide. Uh, however, you, this morning we are seeing a bit of a correction here to the upside. However, it's still below this 155 territory, so uh, in a way, this could still drift back down again. And uh, for those who are more on the cautious side, what you could do here is just probably uh, wait for a drop below this key area of support as you can see this key area of support uh, acted today as a good well act, held the the price from moving lower today this morning and it was also seen as a good area of resistance back here on the 4th of april so this area is around 146.63 zones roughly around there 
if we do get a drop below this then yes this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and well i mean more sellers could be joining in and driving this one uh, to the downside so yeah something to consider something to keep an eye on guys then the next level for us could be around the 123.94 or in a way you could round it up towards the 124 level and then we will take it from there guys for now yep uh, we're leaning a little bit more to the downside but uh probably will will be cautious here uh but if we start seeing a drop below the 146.60 zone then yes uh, we will aim for uh, slightly deeper and uh, slightly larger extensions to the downside a dxy dxy i've talked about this one recently as well and basically what i was saying that um so this is what i talked about on on the 15th so basically on uh, well yesterday in my, in my 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 morning video so we had a nice pop through this uh, downside line here um this downside line, we had a, a nice break of it. We also managed to break the, um, uh, we managed to break this 99.91 level at some point, but the the index, the dollar index got quickly pushed back below the downside line. But this morning, uh, we had a nice open above this. And basically now, I mean, looking at this picture, this is kind of leaning more towards the upside. However, this 99.91 level continues to act as a fantastic area of resistance. Although we keep getting overshoots here, you can see that the bulls are struggling to stay above this barrier. So that's why we would like to see a daily close at least above this barrier here first, and then we could consider some higher levels. But again, for now, you can see that it's struggling to do so. So probably remain a little bit cautious and neutral um, in terms of the downside. Now, probably let's get rid of this downside line. We no longer need it. Uh, what we will be looking at here will be these recent lows, like, for example, the 98 uh, the 98.89 zone or the this level here the low of the 50 this should I say the current low of this week which is around the 98.82 zone so basically around this territory we need to see a break of this little territory here in order to aim for lower levels for now uh, it seems that the ups, uh, the downside is slightly off the table so yep let's focus on this 99.91 zone if it if it fails to withhold then yep higher levels could be met um, ADUSD. So this is kind of gradually leading from the dollar index into AUDUSD. So the pair yesterday uh, drifted lower, however, still remained above this upside support line taken from the low of the 19th of March. This morning we're seeing a violation of this of, uh, this upside support line already, and in a way, uh, this could lead to some lower levels. However, uh, we would prefer to wait for a drop below that uh, zone here. Let me just quickly put this one on the chart, so this, adjust the arrow. Uh, we would like to see a drop below this highlighted area here, the 0 0.6214 area, um, or actually, yes, 6214, uh, in order to kind of get comfortable a little, a little bit, get more comfortable with lower levels. and. Uh, that's why for now we're waiting here uh we're playing the waiting game and uh, we will remain cautiously bearish um however again uh, if this by any chance suddenly reverses sharply back to the upside in order to get comfortable with higher levels we need to see uh, a push above the current high of this week near the 0 0.6445 uh, zone and a break of this uh, a break of this short-term uh tentative upside support line taken from the high of the first of january so keep your eyes on this one uh let's see if this can be broken but again for now we're leaning more towards the downside however to get a little bit more comfortable with lower levels we need to see a drop below the 0 0.6214 level first and then we could consider further declines a usd cad now usd cad had a fantastic run uh to the upside of course the stronger dollar and the weaker canadian dollar kind of uh, helped this pair to remain above this downside line and above this barrier here the 1.4 40, uh, 75, 76 zone. Now, to be honest, we are going to be leaning more towards the upside. Um, and uh, to be honest, as long as it remains above this uh, above this 1.4075 territory or even this uh, this this downside line, as long as it stays above it, then yes, we will continue targeting the upside. We will aim for the 1.4325 territory, roughly around there, and then we would take it from there, guys. In terms of the downside, now as you can see, a bunch of levels here got violated. Um, and uh, in a way for us to maybe start considering the downside again, well, we could start looking at 
at lower levels if we get a drop below the 1.3922 zone here again that's the low of the 27th of March and then of course we'll be very careful near the current low of April which is around the 1.3856 and of course after that we could slowly continue uh, targeting lower levels but again we first we would need to see a, a move back below this downside line and a drop below the 1.3922 zone so keep your eyes on this one however as I said the downside uh, scenario is slightly off the table for now we're the main focus right now is on the upside and uh, GBP UNZD, so I haven't looked at this one for quite a while, but for now it's working working out nicely. Again, um, previously um, I spoke about this little uh, area here. Um, basically what I was saying that if we get a drop below the 2.0510 territory then yes this could increase the chances of a potential move further down however as you can see it reversed it found support somewhere around uh, here basically uh, near the 2.0450 mark and then kind of started uh, reversing back to the upside and it did have a few false breakouts uh, but uh, didn't quite really uh, stay below this area and reversed back to the upside and most important it moved back below above the 2.0764 territory I talked about this one recently and is now near the, this uh, this key important area around the 2.10 zone so um, if this barrier gets broken then well guess what this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and more buyers could be joining in here so Keep your eyes on this on this level. Let's see if it can uh, if it can break here and if we can see a higher high. Um, but again, like for now, everything's kind of leaning towards that. And uh, but again, like I said, don't don't get, don't rush into this yet. Wait for that confirmation break first. In terms of the downside, well, I mean, if this suddenly starts dropping back below the 2.0764 territory, then yes, we could consider maybe some. Uh, some deeper extensions to the downside here so keep your eyes on this one and finally euro usd so here the situation is a little bit more difficult for the bulls um now yesterday i spoke about this pair and in the morning i was telling you guys because in the morning we were still hanging around here uh then uh when my when i was doing my traders tea time it, dro it already dropped lower um basically what i was saying in the morning that if we get a drop below this little this territory back below this territory and yes this increases the chances of a uh, potential drift towards this short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 22nd of march look at the fantastic test um and um what I was saying that if this area holds, then we could see a nice rebound and a push back to the upside. However, for now, the the, the bulls are, uh, let's say, not that comfortable yet. Um, of course, the upside line continues to hold. However, if we see a break below this, all this territory here will be somewhat of a neutral one. For us to get excited with the downside, as I said previously, we need to see a drop below the 1.0777 zone. So, yep, we're waiting for a drop below that before we could consider deeper extensions to the downside. In terms of the upside, again, we uh, as long as it remains above the upside support line still has a chance to drift higher however probably we will um it to be on in more on the safe side we will probably wait for a push back above the 1.0953 territory here a push above this 200 ema on the four hour chart and then we could aim for higher levels for now uh we're just going to continue observing this one and uh well uh we're not going to be doing anything just uh like i said watching and waiting for that confirmation breakthrough one of the highlighted areas again so I hope you found it useful, guys. Thank you very much for all your uh, likes and support and views and, and everything. And thank you very much for being with me, guys, and watching my videos. So I re really, really appreciate that. Um, if you want to join me later on, if, my trader, uh, my, if you want to catch my later uh, my trader's tea time later on, uh, around 13, 15 GMT time, Yep, so we'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones, and we'll see how everything's kind of getting along. Uh, today, of course, uh, there is a bit of data to watch uh, the calendar. Uh, not much. We do have the well, the German IFO business climate, so which is coming out soon. Uh, from the U.S., we have the initial jobless claims, which is quite important to see how we have done because the previous uh, figures were uh, were record lows. So it would be quite interesting to see how it's performing for the third week in a row. So if if we do have 
uh, a rise in the initial jobless claims in the U.S. Um, so, yeah, that's well. Of course, I mean, this is this is some actions might be taken from the government, some uh, from stronger actions. So, yep, yeah, keep your eyes on those guys. So, yep, yeah, keep your eyes on that data. Uh, look at the ca look at the economic calendar and uh, try probably avoid trading during those times. So um, anyway, I hope you stay safe, guys. Stay safe both uh, market-wise and health-wise. And uh, yep, I'll catch you later uh, around 13, 15 GMT time uh, with my traders tea time. So uh, thank you very much and bye-bye.